I actually think that this design may be the helicopter of the future. So yes, this aircraft is similar to the V-22 Osprey, but this is the Bell V-280 Valor. And yes, they may look similar, but there are some key differences. And the most obvious question is, is this a helicopter or is it an airplane? And honestly, I don't know. I actually think this is kind of like an opinion. Whether you think it's an airplane or a helicopter, it doesn't matter. So stick around till the end because we're going to be talking about a civilian style aircraft like this that us civilian helicopter pilots may be able to fly. Now this is a military aircraft but there's kind of a civilian one in the works so stay till the end for that. It can be kind of confusing to think of what the purpose of this aircraft is but it has some extreme benefits that neither helicopters or airplanes have on their own so this combines it and I think it's really important. So here's an example of why this technology is so crucial. There's this concept called the golden hour. The golden hour is the period of time immediately after a traumatic injury during which there is the highest likelihood that prompt medical and surgical treatment will prevent death. So let's imagine a situation where there is a soldier that gets hurt on the battlefield and they need to be expedited immediately to the nearest medical facility. Well, you want an airplane because they can go really fast, but airplanes need runways, so an airplane is not an option. But then you've got a helicopter which can drop in vertically and get out of there, but they're slow. So we need something that can do like this and do like that, but neither an airplane or a helicopter can do that by itself. Now you can see where this aircraft design could become really important, but let's talk specifics. The V-280 Valor cruises at more than 280 knots, but it has achieved speeds of over 300 knots. It has what they call a combat range of about 500 miles, but I've seen numbers on a couple different sources going anywhere from 500 to 800 nautical miles of combat range. I mean, and the Black Hawk, which is one of the most popular military helicopters, especially for medevac operations, cannot go 280 knots and it cannot go a distance of more than 500 nautical miles. The V-280 Valor can hover out of ground effect, which means the helicopter can hover in space at an altitude of 6,000 feet at 95 degrees Fahrenheit. It has an empty weight of 18,000 pounds. It has a max takeoff weight of 31,000 pounds. It has retractable landing gear. It can carry 12 pounds passengers and four crew members. It has two six foot wide doors on either side to allow immediate entry and exit. So obviously it's a very capable aircraft. The initial design of the V-280 is in a cargo or utility capacity. However, there are talks for this to be an attack helicopter that is capable of launching rockets and missiles. Bell also talks about how it has incredible low speed maneuvering. So let's check out that video real quick. But one of the largest differences between the Valor and the Osprey is that the Valor doesn't have moving engines. On the Osprey, the engines actually pivot. So whether they're in a vertical formation or a horizontal formation, the engine itself moves with the rotor. However, on the Valor, the engine stays in place and the transmission drive system moves the rotor, either from a vertical path to a horizontal path. That's important because it reduces the amount of moving parts and you're not changing the axis of an engine, which is limiting the amount of problems. The other thing that's really important that they mention is there is a drive shaft running through the wing. So in the event that one engine fails, that drive shaft will continue to allow the other propeller to spin. So let's look at the timeline of this project. In December of 2017, it had its first flight. In February of 2018, the first Army test pilot flew it. In August of 2018, it demonstrated sustained 200 knots in level flight. 
flight. In January of 2019, it just demonstrated level one agility and attitude quickness. And honestly, I'm not exactly sure what they mean by that. In March of 2019, it sustained 300 knots at level flight. And in July of 2020, it went through survivability testing. And as of December of 2020, it has had 200 flight hours, 159 test flights. It has sustained 300 knots, 10 army test pilots have flown it, and there have been 15 VIP demos. And that is what is up to date on the Bell website. I think if this project goes through and everything works, this has the capability to be everything that the Osprey was not. And if you made it this far in the video, smash that like button. Also write the word future in the comments because I think this is the aircraft of the future. And as I alluded to in the start of this video, I talked about how there may be a civilian type of aircraft like this that us civilian pilots may be able to fly one day. And that is the Augusta Westland 609 or 609. And maybe I'm just late to the party, but I did not know this was in development and it's pretty freaking cool. And as I was reading through the pages, looking for more information about this aircraft, I stumbled across this weird fact. And I am not nearly smart enough to explain how this works at all, but I'll tell it to you. So according to Paul Edwards, who was one of the experimental test pilots of this aircraft, tilt rotors are not susceptible to vortex ring state. He's quoted as saying, we had to try really hard to get there. It was about to fly itself out when we applied the recovery technique. Both rotors are not going to enter the vortex ring simultaneously. It slides sideways to get itself out. So for anyone that doesn't know, vortex ring state is when the helicopter is descending vertically and basically it's sucking in its own downwash. If you can come down vertically and not have to worry about this condition, that's a benefit. So the 609 has a cruise speed of 316 miles per hour and it has a range of 863 miles. However, it's important to mention that in 2015, there was a crash of one of the prototype helicopters. Two test pilots on board were killed. So despite the accident, as of last month, as of March of 2022, Leonardo is still predicting that this aircraft will be in service by next year or 2023. So it's a super cool aircraft and basically the civilian version of the V280 Valor. And I would love to get to fly one and maybe I will someday. And what they quote, and I think this makes perfect sense, there's like two markets for this type of aircraft. The first one is the offshore oil rig market. So most people are familiar with these oil rigs that are in deep water offshore and they are always used by helicopters to bring people in between the rigs and to transport executives out there and bring supplies and stuff. But the great thing about this aircraft is it could allow these oil rigs to be drilled even further into the water because there is an aircraft that can actually fly that far out, land vertically and fly back. Also, it's gonna make it a much faster experience. And if you remember earlier in the video where I alluded to the golden hour for like a military, per uh, a soldier that was injured, that same golden hour exists in like the civilian regular medical world. So imagine someone is rock climbing and they fall and they have uh, a head injury or something. You could have this aircraft fly there, land vertically, pick them up and fly to a trauma center very quickly because it can fly upwards of 300 miles per hour and then it could still land on that rooftop hospital. So both the civilian and military version of this aircraft design I think has incredible uses and I want to leave you with three questions. The first one is if you were a pilot of one of these aircrafts and you had a log book and you were going to log your flight time, do you log it as helicopter time, airplane time, or tilt rotor time? And this is not a trick question. I don't know. I don't know exactly what the FAA wants you to log it as. And the second question is, I also don't know the answer to this one. Do you need to be a dual rated pilot to fly? Do you need to have both your helicopter and airplane ratings to be able to fly this aircraft? And the third question I'll leave you with is what other markets can you think of that this aircraft would be good for? Where else could this design fit in and help solve a problem somewhere? All right, let's wrap it up there. If you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button. I'd really appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys on the next one. Take care.